Hi, welcome to Fatch TV. I'm your host, Larry Tucker, and today we are at Harvest Time Church, where we'll be interviewing Sean McLemore, who will be starring in the stage play, Miracles at the Jones House. Stay with us, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, and uh, we're here with a gospel recording artist, Mr. Sean McLemore. Welcome. Thank you for having me, man. All right, so uh, Sean, we want to start right from the beginning. Um, I understand you grew up in Southern California. Yeah, man. Okay. From Compton, California. From Compton. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, uh, grew up in the, you know, if you, you know, can't beat them, gotta join them. And uh, unfortunately, I, I joined them for a minute because I just didn't have a other way out, you know. But that's my hometown, L.A. Okay. Know, so. Here in the city, Houston now. All right. Well, well, we welcome you. So, tell us about your your time in Compton, and what what uh, at that point influenced where you are today. How did that make you into the man you are today? Wow, man. I uh, I grew up in Compton, California, man, and uh, you know we didn't have a lot. You know what I'm saying? And uh, out there, we grew up in the bungalows. You know, which is probably probably like considered here like. Uh, the heart of Fifth Ward, Deep Fifth Ward, you know. Um, so you know, we had to, we had to scrape and scrap, you know what I'm saying, and make ends meet. Uh, and so I was able to have praying parents, you know, parents that went to church. I was, I was, I was actually into the gang situation, you know, Crips back going on back then. You know, a lot of people see me now. They like, you know, I'm 47 years old. Yeah, I'm 47 years old, and I was involved in all of that kind of stuff, you know. But there was always an avenue that God had placed in me, and that was music, you know. And uh, I wouldn't use it around my guys, you know, crib home boys, because they, you know, I felt like they may have thought that may be a little bit too feminine for where we were, you know what I'm saying? So I just kind of just chilled off of that, and they heard me. Uh, I was one of the ones who had favor on their life and that God always had something special, but I was yet doing my own thing, you know. And uh, one year in school, um, I was asked to do the national anthem for homecoming. And that's when everybody figured out I had a voice, you know, could sing. And so uh, my name back then was Big Mac, you know, so everybody was, you know, the respect level for me sort of changed once they heard the singing. And I, I became like one of the, one of the cats then, you know, but, you know, still doing things that I had no business doing, but God kept his hand on me, man. Okay. You know, and I'm, I'm still here today. Okay, well, that's awesome. So, Sean, Sean Big Mac. So, you wasn't, yeah. you wasn't, you wasn't singing gospel songs and, and banging at the same time. Nah, nah. And, but you know what? I was, I was in church every Sunday. I was in church every Sunday, man. My mom, uh, my dad would always get me up, bring me to church every Sunday, you know, and, uh, at least I had that particular background, you know, and I knew about it, so I knew better, you know, because I grew up with the knowledge of sitting in church and knowing right from wrong, which other cats that I dealt with didn't care nothing about that, you know what I'm saying? They figured out, they figured that they made right from wrong, you know, or wrong from right. So I, uh, I was able to finish school with the Crenshaw High School through the school there, you know, and uh, went to uh, West Los Angeles Junior College, played football there until they cut out the sports program. And that was basically it, man, and, and pursued a uh, acting career, mm -hmm. you know, before I really wanted to really do some singing for real. So I started acting then, you know, had a couple of movies under my belt and uh, a bunch of commercials and things like that. Yeah, a lot of people may or may not know this, but in, in, in addition to being a gospel recording artist you're also you've also done some stage plays absolutely well. man i've done several stage plays baby look Go make yourself pick. at home you are welcome because i got something i need to talk to your uncle about in the back bedroom oh so you you want to go off on me talk about my food habits and all that old kind of stuff in front of your folks now you want to go to the bedroom <laughs> you just to flip the script just like that huh <laughs> Let me see what you're working with. Come on. Hit me right there. You know what? <laughs> Won't nothing be going on in this bedroom. Now get in here. Hey. Been shopping, huh? 
All this noise off up in here. What is that in your yeah. nose? They, oh, they, they go, go in your, in your ear. In oh, oh, my God. I was coming off. You, Girl, I was at work. What you, you look like? You ain't that. got no job. Let me see what you look like. Stand on that. Yeah. Turn around. Second now. Uh -huh. I need you to not go in my chair anymore. I don't even know. That's my area. Know. I thought we was better than that. We are better than that. We better See? chill out. I'm the man of this house. You better stop clowning me in front of your little company. You the man of this house, but the man need to get him a job and take care of them kids. Did she say something about my kids again? She did she say something about my tears? She sure did. What that supposed to mean? What you think it's supposed to mean? You better stop clowning me. I keep telling Every you, you need to get you a job because... Just, I'm not scared of you or your sister, and I'm going to tell you. Okay. You better out, you two. What's going on with y'all? Did we come at the wrong time or something? Yes, you did. I think we did. I know the love. I know the love. I know the There was a guy named uh, Michael Matthews from Detroit, Michigan, and he uh, and uh, he introduced me to it. You know, Mike is one of the pioneers before before the Tyler Perrys, before the Shelly Garretts. You know, it was Mike Matthews. Okay. So he introduced me, and I did like probably about seven plays. That's when uh, Mary Mary wasn't Mary Mary. They were in the shows. Isaac Kareem was in the shows. Dawkins and Dawkins was in the shows. That's before they became who they were. Before we became anything, we went through Michael Matthews' camp. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what it was called. It was Michael Matthews' camp. And I can remember to this day how Tyler Perry used to come and watch his shows. And it used to blow my mind because we were the top dogs in the theater and he wasn't even in theater yet. He was just coming and watching shows. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow. Now I'm having a chance to you know, love shows and work with this guy. Okay. So uh, some people may know you've worked with some some pretty big names. Uh, Kim Burrell, Donnie McClurkin, Winans, John P. Keys, James Fortune and Fire, just to name a few. And uh, so that's a long way from Compton to working <laughs> with these professionals. Yeah. So tell us about, about some of the, the, the artists that you've worked with and some of those experiences. Well, how I got started musically, um, I was uh, singing, in, um, singing in Los Angeles at a big conference, and uh, the Winans were there. Marvin Winans and Ronald Winans were there. And I sang at this conference, and uh, after the service, Ron Winans came up to me and said, Sing, man. Uh, I love your voice, you know, have you ever did any stage acting, any plays, anything like that? I said, yeah, I've done a couple of plays, and he's like, you know, hey, I got a play coming out, and I would love to see if you want to be a part. It was called Don't Get God Started. Uh, Donnie McClurkin was in it before he came, he came Donnie. He was my roommate for a whole year in the show. So that's how Donnie and I became real cool and close. So uh, that's kind of how the senior career got started, you know, and then after, you know, with all of that going on, I started getting into the acting and uh, was able to do a film called Colors. It was a, a game controversial movie, Sean Penn and Robert Duvall, and I had a nice role in that, and uh, that was one of my major films. Uh, Colors, I did a film called Summer Cap Nightmare with, uh, with uh, Chuck Connors, he was the rifle man back in the day. I don't know if you remember him, but mm -hmm. that's how all that got started, man. You know, okay. Man. I didn't know he was in colors. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, one of my favorites as a kid. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was being interrogated by Sean Penn. 
Yeah, I had on a blue Georgetown jacket and he was trying to make me tell <laughs> whose band it was and all that other okay. stuff. But, you know, it was cool. It came well and it got me a good start, you know. So uh, to have that on my resume is always great. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. So, um, so tell me, uh, have there been any projects in particular that you worked on, either in song or theater or film, that really uh, impacted you in a powerful way in terms of your ministry and singing? Well, my last record I did, um, um, I worked on a project uh, which was my record. It was basically I could call it a life story record. You know, called Wait on Him and. Uh, you know, I went through a few things health-wise and, uh, you know, suffered a ma major heart attack, you know, three years ago, you know, heart rate at 198 beats per minute and they lost me in the back, had to shock my heart four times and all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, and that all connected with even the song that really birthed, birthed that, that Jesus in me was, I believe. Mm -hmm. with James Fortune mm -hmm. and uh, that happened I was out of the hospital in two weeks and went in the studio and did that song and uh, I didn't know what it was going to be I didn't know how it was going to turn out or what impact it was going to have on people but when I did that song uh, that song still gets me engagements today and we did that song over four years ago yeah, that, that song was actually I'll number be one it tonight, you know, oh okay so, yeah. excellent that song was actually number one on the Billboard for 19 weeks. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's, it's a blessing to be able to uh, to be a part of history like that, mm -hmm. you know, and to go across the country and it doesn't matter what I sing, you know, I I can just get to that part. I believe, and people just they they, they healed instantly. To that song and in that song that that transparently connected to people you know what i'm saying to their healing process to their belief process to their hope process how many times you walk around in a day and you probably don't even notice that you say man i believe this will work like this mm -hmm. i've said man you know i mean it's cool but you know i believe if we just you know you just i believe just comes out your mouth so many times you don't even know the um the, the song that you wrote, and I didn't realize that it was connected to that event that happened to you in 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, when you had that massive heart attack, mm -hmm. they gave you a 1% chance That's of survival. Right. That's right. And, That's uh, right. And the doctors told me, he came in the next day, he said, man, I'm, I, I, I didn't want to tell your family, but, you know, we, we lost you for a tremendous amount of time back there. And... Uh, you actually passed away, and it was imperative that I made all of the doctors come back in and put their garments on and shock you again. And so he says, the kind of heart attack you had rarely happens that people survive that. So he said, I'll call you a 1% miracle. That's what the doctors told him. Yeah, he told me that. I was like, serious, because I didn't remember nothing. I didn't feel no pain. Uh, the anesthesia they had me on you know, was the best sleep I ever had. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't know what was up. Oh, wow. And God really brought me through, man. And uh, I, I pay tribute and pay homage to him for that for the rest of my life. That is a uh, that is a very, very powerful, powerful testimony. Um, again, uh, we are here with Mr. Sean McLemore, and we will be right back. In a minute. Welcome to Fatch TV, the Christian network that delivers uplifting and inspiring messages from a wide range of ministries. 
such as gospel singers, pastors, poets, talk show hosts, and more. Fatch TV uses technology that is feature rich and sophisticated, yet completely easy to use. If you would like to share your ministry with a global Christian audience, then we invite you to join our network. Besides live, on-demand, and radio streaming services, we offer brand building, advertising opportunities, and professional services such as web design, video editing, graphic design, and more. Sign up today for your 30-day risk-free trial by visiting us on the web at FatchTV.com. It's, it's a trip because I was laying in the bed patting like a dog looking at six doctors at Herman Memorial trying to figure it out. Six doctors, six, trying to understand why, how they couldn't get, they gave me some medicine and made, it made me feel real funky, real crazy. And it didn't stop me. He said, we gave you what we could that we knew could stop some epinephrine or something and it wouldn't stop said we're trying to figure this out he said you're a sick guy he said your heart could go so fast till it will flutter and just stop and there was a heart specialist bro that got off on the wrong floor reading his notepad and walked past the room and saw six doctors sitting in there he walked in there and said what's going on in here he became my doctor instantly they said this is what's going on doc we can't get we can't get him, we can't get his heart rate down. And so he looked at my chart, came over, and he said, you're a very sick man, very sick guy. He said, you're running a marathon without running. He said, your heart could flutter and you could die right away. Do you have any family? I said, my wife is still at home sleeping. She didn't know. And they got in touch with her. and. When she walked in the room, man, she was walking in the room, putting oil on everybody, praying. And that's when they took me upstairs and, you know, put put the anesthesia on me and shocked me four times, man. And uh, when they shocked me four times, bro, I'm, I'm sitting here with you tonight. You know what I'm saying? Miracle is a blessing, you know. It's, it's, I used to hear people say what God can do for them. But now I know my, myself and what he could really do, you know. So when I get up to minister for people or minister for audiences or minister for God, I don't even worry about if people hear me or not. Makes me no difference because they couldn't do what I just went through, what he did for me. So I'm not pleased, trying to please you. I'm just trying to get you, invite you into what I know and to do what you know is good for you, you know, and that's give God some praise, some glory, and some honor. So I'm grateful, man. Amen, that's a, that is a powerful, powerful testimony to be there. We want to welcome you back. Uh, we are here today uh, with Mr. Sean McLemore. We're at Harvest Time Church in Houston, Texas. Yeah. And we are here for a play. The name of the play is Miracle at the Jones House. Miracle at the Jones House here at Harvest Time Church yeah. featuring uh, Sean McLemore and I think you have a, a few other uh, locals that are going to be uh, mm -hmm. in the play as well. A young lady named Brandy, uh, playwrights of Tawana um, and uh, Tiffany and uh, man they've done an awesome job with this show so we're here at Harvest Time Church, Bishop Baby, I used to work at this church, uh, minister music, uh, hired me as an intern, intern to come in. Uh, his minister music went away for a while and he asked me to come and this is like family home to me. So um, we here, man, you know, at Harvest Time Church. Awesome. Getting ready to jump on stage and have some fun. Awesome. Practice, you know, <laughs> get ready to go and meet up with, with Steve, man, and uh, partner named Steve of mine who's getting ready to take me on up there with Tyler, bro. Yeah, so tell us what, so I understand you got some new projects coming. Yeah, right? man. I. Uh, Really, the acting thing. Um, I've worked. I've just finished producing my wife's record. It's about to be released. But um, um, the music thing with me is cool. You know, I'm. I've been kind of on hold for that. I've been praying. You show kind of really watch what you're praying to ask God for, for real. Because I've been praying that God do something different with my career. 
and uh, I went on a Tom Joyner cruise. Okay. My wife and I went on uh, vacation, Tom Joyner cruise. I don't even know there was an audition with Tyler Perry on the cruise. A friend of mine said, have been to my plays, and she said, you know, Tyler Perry's gonna be on the ship to hold an audition. And I said, no, I didn't know that. And she was like, you really ought to audition, man, because I believe you'll make it. And so I'm like, man, I, I, I don't like getting turned down. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of, <laughs> I just want to vacate, turn it up, and have some fun with the wife, you know. So my wife said, I think you should. And when she said that, then that let me know that she believed in the gift that I had in acting, you know. So um, I went on filled out the paperwork, and 500 people auditioned Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tyler Perry got on the ship Friday. He sent his crew down his uh, casting crew down and auditioned everybody. So I got a, a letter in my cabin that Thursday night said congratulations, you'll be one of the 30 that was chosen to audition in front of Tyler Perry. So I'm like, okay, this can't be happening. You know, just, and I didn't go in there for that. You know, I went to chill out with the wife, vacate, and turn it up. You know what I'm saying? So I would think about Tyler Perry, so it started happening quick. And so we all came in and uh, everybody who auditioned came, the 30 people came in, the theater got packed out, I'm like people are everywhere. Then they said, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one and only Mr. Tyler Perry. This dude come walking out on stage, you know, big old mud dead figure cat. You know, I'm like, whoa, this is serious. Again, I just went to chill with the wife, vacate and turn it up. I wouldn't even think about Tyler Perry, bro. And he called everybody on stage one by one. We did our sides, uh, I learned my part, went up there and auditioned, and he shook his head. I said, thank you very much. And I sat down, and so he said, I'm gonna call the names of everybody who just auditioned, all of the 30 come back on stage, we all went back on stage. He said, the people that I'll ask to sit down, it's not that you don't have the gift, it's that I'm looking for certain gifts, I'm looking for certain talents, I'm looking for certain look. A certain tone, a certain voice, because I'm shooting some pilots right now, and I need and I need some people. And uh, the people that I choose will, their lives will change, and they will be truly blessed. And so he start calling names off. When I call your name, please sit down. He start calling names. Boom, call another name. Then that dude said, Sean McElroy. I, I stepped out of line. I, my heart dropped to my feet. He said, no, 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 oh, Sean, I'm sorry, I'm, I mean, Sean Valentine, you know the guy. Thank you, Sean Valentine, you have a seat. Man, I ain't gonna say what I felt like, but I, man, I thought it was over for me, period. With everything else I wanted to do, my heart just sunk. And so, once that happened, he chose, it was eight of us standing, and he said, give these eight people a hand. He said, these are the people whose, whose lives will change that I chose. And right now, I just received a script a couple of days ago to uh, uh, show that he's doing it's a pilot. It's going to be on the home network. Uh, uh, it's called If Loving You Is Wrong. And him and Oprah wrote it. And so I go up the second week in February to do my part, man. Wow. That yeah. is, you heard it. You heard it here. You heard First. It here. <laughs> right. here on Fatch TV. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're gonna be working with Tyler Perry and yeah, Oprah man. and yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited. I'm just, you know, I you know I thank God because it's really all Him. You know, He 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 has to trust you with next level before He puts you in next level. Mm -hmm. You know, He has to trust that He can pay you before you're paid. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so I, I really thank and give honor and praise to Him. And my attitude of going up there is to simply say, I'm here to serve. Whatever you need me to do, I'm here to serve because you're great mm -hmm. at what you do. And God has allowed my gift to be around great men. So, hey, I'm here to serve and whatever you need, bro. I'm just ready to help, you know, I'm ready to work hard and go to the next level. That's awesome. We look forward to that. What's the name of the show again? If Loving You Is Wrong. If Loving You Is Wrong on the OWN Network mm -hmm. uh, featuring uh, Mr. Sean McLemore. Yeah. So what else can we look for from you? Can we look, can we, do you have anything in the works in terms of the music? That. 
is loving you wrong. <laughs> no, music. No, I mean, yeah, I got some music stuff that I'm gonna be working on, you know, in the future. You know, that's never gonna stop. So um, I've been asking management. I wanted to get into the acting thing, and you know, it happened faster than they thought it would. You know, so I want to grab the reins to that and just move. And he hadn't even heard me sing. Oh, so that's a whole nother piece. Oh, so okay. they don't tell him what that's gonna do. So will you, will you be doing just acting yeah, in that's that? it. or just that's no it. singing, no yeah. nothing? Yeah. He casted me as acting, not singing. He don't even know I sing. Really? Then a guy like him, he's probably done his homework by now. Right. You know, but that's not what I did in front of him. Okay. Well, he's probably in for a little treat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, again, I want to thank you, Sean, for your time. I really appreciate you, it, brother. Man. Appreciate and you. And that was a, a powerful testimony, and it was good learning more about you. Mm -hmm and uh, where you come from, and, and more importantly, where you're going. That's right. And so we wish you much success. Get it all out. Y'all gotta get it all out. If it's in you, get it out. God didn't put it there for just no reason. It makes no sense for a million dollar man to be buried in a $6,000 grave. Amen. All right, well, that'll wrap it up for today. We wanna thank you again. We're here again at Harvest Time Church. If you're in Houston and you're uh, looking for a place to come and worship, we invite you to come down to Harvest Time Church mm -hmm. and uh, follow Sean. He'll be on the OWN Network and follow us on Fatch TV. We thank you. God bless. It ain't over. All right, we're back and we're here with Miss Tiffany. So Tiffany, tell us about yourself and your organization and why we're here tonight. I'm with uh, Touching the Heart of God production and we are here doing a play today called Miracles at the Joneses House. And we're so excited to come out and be able to minister to the people and let um, let them know that there are miracles. God is still performing. The play is about uh, four friends that come together and they have issues. They have marriage issues. They have finance issues. They have all different type of issues. And what happens is we give up on God instead of trying to ask God to guide us and protect us and. Uh, heal us from all harm and danger, we end up being in a place where we try to do it up on ourselves. So we are in this thing to make people believe again that God still gives miracles. He still performs miracles. Amen. And so tell us, who is starring in this play? The star is Sean McLemore, yay! <laughs> and also myself, yours truly, Tiffany Rochelle. And we have a lot of great artists that, that are that we went locally in Houston, Texas to pull. We have uh, Media Cole, she's a great artist. So we have a lot of people that we are using in this play. So you gonna bless us with some song tonight? Yes, Amen. yes, yes, right. hallelujah. All right, well thank you Tiffany, and uh, we are excited about the play and we look forward to uh, an exciting show. And uh, that concludes this segment of Fatch TV, and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. At the same time, eating, eating bad, bad and eating good. And then we come over here eating good with Carol. I'm just filming. Y'all taking the picture and stuff. I see. Ain't nobody. I'm filming y'all. I ain't trying to take no picture. <laughs> Walking down the street, they're like, who that is? They're gonna move you because of that hellbutt right there. <laughs>
Awesome, awesome. Thank you, ladies.